Hey traders, Gavin McMaster here from Options Trading IQ doing a video collaboration with Bar Chart. And today we're going to be looking at the volatility term structure in Bar Chart Excel. Just a quick reminder that everything discussed is for educational purposes only, is general in nature, and does not take into account your personal circumstances. So understanding volatility term structure is crucial for anyone involved in options trading. It represents the market's expectation of future volatility and can provide valuable insights into market sentiment and potential price movements. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, mastering this concept can significantly enhance your trading. So let's get started. To help us dive deep into the volatility term structure, we'll be using Bar Chart Excel. Bar Chart Excel is a powerful tool that allows traders to access, analyze, and visualize a wide range of financial data directly within Excel. Its easy interface and comprehensive data sets make it an ideal choice for this kind of analysis. Today, you'll learn the process of extracting the necessary data and performing a thorough analysis of the volatility term structure. Understanding volatility term structure. Volatility term structure is a graphical representation of the implied volatility of options across different expiration dates. This structure helps traders understand how volatility is expected to change over time. It is sometimes called horizontal skew because we are moving across the option strikes through time. Interpreting the volatility term structure. Contango is what we would call a normal term structure and exists most of the time, particularly during a bull market. We can kind of see that here at the moment on June 10th. We've got a little bit of a, a bit of noise here at the front of the, the term structure, but generally speaking, we've got lower volatility in the short-term options. And as we move further out through time, the volatility is higher. So that's what we call contango, when we've got low volatility in the short term and higher volatility in the longer term. Now that happens most of the time in a bull market. It's what we call sort of consider normal market conditions. The reason volatility is higher for those longer dated options is because with more time in the in the option, there's more potential for something bad to happen. So we need to be compensated for that in terms of higher volatility. It is sometimes called horizontal skew because we are moving across the option strikes through time. Interpreting the volatility term structure. Contango is what we would call a normal term structure and exists most of the time, particularly during a bull market. We can kind of see that here at the moment on June 10th. We've got a little bit of a, a bit of noise here at the front of the, the term structure, but generally speaking, we've got lower volatility in the short term options. And as we move further out through time, the volatility is higher. So that's what we call contango when we've got low volatility in the short term and higher volatility in the longer term. Now that happens most of the time in a bull market. It's what we call sort of consider normal market conditions. The reason volatility is higher for those longer dated options is because with more time in the, in the option, there's more potential for something bad to happen. So we need to be compensated for that in terms of higher volatility. Backwardation is an inverted term structure with higher volatility in the short term options. Usually this occurs during times of market stress. I like to call it panic mode. So I have a, a saying, bad things happen in backwardation. And when we go into backwardation, that's when we can sometimes see large market corrections. Now we are seeing some strange backwardation at the moment in a lot of stocks. Here we're seeing um, some backwardation in Apple where with the very short term options, we've got really high volatility and it does drop down a little bit as we go out in time and then further out in the chart, it's starting to rise again. So a little bit of a strange uh, term structure at the moment, not what we would normally see, and, but it's also not panic mode because the market's pretty calm. There's not a lot of, uh, not a big correction going on or anything like that. The possible reason for the, the high volatility in the short term is we've got the Fed minutes coming out this week and also CPI. So there's a lot of volatility around those events. Here's another example of backwardation, probably a better example on Tesla. This was from March last year where we can clearly see high volatility in the short-term options 
And as we go further out in time, the volatility is dropping and we've got lower volatility in the longer term options. So not a normal situation. Um, backwardation tends to occur much less often than can tango. Let's take a look at how to obtain and analyze the term structure in bar chart Excel. So within our Excel file, if we go over to our bar chart tab, we wanna just click on this volatility section. And to look at say the Apple term structure, we'll type in our ticker. We'll double click that to bring that across. And we just wanna select term structure here. And then we can go by expiration and over here, we've just got the first expiration selected. I like to select all. Sometimes I'll turn off the first day or first weekly option because there can be a little bit of noise there as you can see um, in the chart when we load this in. So there's our term structure that we were looking at earlier on the slides. You can see the high volatility in the short term options and lower volatility as we go a little bit further out in time. Now, in terms of using this for a trading strategy, let's say we were bullish on Apple. We can use this high volatility in the short term options to our advantage by selling put options, selling short term put options. If we want to sell a put option on Apple, we're much better off selling a really short term option rather than selling, say, a regular monthly or 45 day option here because we're getting much better bang for our buck with our volatility. Remember, if volatility is high, option premiums are high. So the value of those puts are going to be really high in the short term. So we're going to receive a lot of premium relative to or compared to if we we're selling a slightly longer term option. As an example, if I want to go and look at the prices of some Apple put options, I can come in here, select Apple, and I'm going to select a few different expirations here, just a couple of short term options and then a regular sort of 38 day expiration. Just remove some of these. And if we take a look at say our at the money options, the short term options trading about 90 cents. And then if we go out to our July 190 put options trading about 281. So if we just do a little quick analysis here, we've got three days to expiration here. That divided by the stock price. It's around a 0.47% return in three days. If we then say uh, annualize that return, it's about a 56% annualized return. So very, very high return for selling an at the money put option for Apple. If we can compare that here, we're getting a, about a 1.46% return in 38 days. So if we annualize that return, it's only about 14% annualized return for taking more or less the same risk of having to buy Apple at 190, we're getting a much, much higher annualized return selling that short term option. You can see that high volatility there, 31% versus 18%. So that's a really quick way that you can look at the term structure of the stock and then structure a trading strategy around what you're seeing with the implied volatility. Another thing you might consider with Apple and looking at a term structure like this is potentially doing a calendar spread or a diagonal spread. So maybe we're more neutral on the price of Apple. We can sell that short term at the money option at 190 with the 31% volatility and we buy a slightly longer term option with the really low volatility. So when it comes to volatility, you can think of it a little bit like a stock. We want to buy low and sell high or in the case of a calendar spread, we're selling high and buying low. Um, same goes for a diagonal. We can sell a short-term put with that high vol. Uh, we can buy a longer-term put with the lower strike price uh, with the lower volatility. I'll just quickly show you also how to bring in a historical term structure. I think Bar Chart Excel is the only um, piece of software that I know that will allow you to do this. So earlier we were looking at Tesla. 
term structure and we'll just have a custom date here, uh, which we were looking at March the 1st, 2023. And that's bringing in our March term structure there from last year compared to the current term structure. If we wanna just get rid of our um, the current one and just look at the previous, we can just remove the data there and there's our term structure that we were looking at earlier. So a great way to go back and look at what the term structure was in the past for various stocks. So you now have a much deeper understanding of volatility term structure. With the help of Bar Chart Excel, you can start viewing and analyzing term structure for your favorite stocks and indices. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.